Welcome back to another episode of Mormon Traditionalist Podcast. My name is Jeremy O'Driscoll and I am your host. No house cleaning today, guys, because this isn't a regular scheduled episode. I just wanted to take a minute to talk to you about a great man that we just lost this last week that was a real mover and shaker in the realm of traditionalism within our faith. That man was James Stoddard. I've mentioned him in this podcast numerous times already, along with his daughter Hannah, who will undoubtedly carry on the work um, that he started. James started devoting his life to the gospel, and specifically studying the life of Joseph Smith, and became one of his most outspoken defenders. Now I could go on and talk about his work and his accomplishments over the years, but I'm sure Hannah and their family will be compiling something like that, and you can also go to josephsmithfoundation.org and see all of his work and his legacy, and I encourage you to do so. In a nutshell, though, James was a founding and key member of the modern-day Mormon traditionalist movement. But I had the opportunity, which I believe to be an incredible blessing and one of the greatest privileges of my life, to meet and talk with James a couple of months ago. And I want to tell you from my brief encounter what kind of man James was and how he has had an everlasting impact on me and this podcast. So we need to back up just a little bit here first to before the podcast started. You might remember from the intro episode that James and Hannah's first faith crisis book was the jumping off point for me into the world of traditionalist Mormonism. I actually bought that book through Rod Meldrum at bookofmormonevidence.org along with some other books. And I think I burned up at least three of my wife's good highlighters reading that book alone. And I can honestly say that reading that book changed my life forever. So now it's a Friday and I'm off work suddenly and early, which is rare. I thought of what uh, to do with my day and immediately thought, I need to get my hands on the next Faith Crisis book to read over the weekend. Problem is, I can't order it online because it won't come until Monday. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe Deseret Book might have it or something, but that's taking a gamble and could end up being a wild goose chase. So I just went to josephsmithfoundation.org, pulled up their contact page, found their phone number listed and called them. And I think it was Leah that answered. And I asked her if they had a storefront or a warehouse or something where I could come by and pick up the book that day so I didn't have to wait on the shipping. And she was super helpful and gave me an address, so I headed out to pick up the book. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, you know, that I'm going to buy this book at basically a bookstore or something. And maybe if I'm lucky, Hannah or James might be passing between the office to the warehouse or something and I'd get a chance to say hi. But I'm just kind of dreaming at this point. Then, as I get about five minutes away, I realize that this isn't an industrial business area like I was expecting. This is a residential neighborhood. And it hits me. I'm going to the Stoddard's home to pick up this book. And I'm getting excited now. There's definitely a chance I'll get to say hi to him. So I pull in, and I think it was Isaiah that was working out in the front yard. And he invites me in, and I just stand there inside the front door uh, waiting And two seconds later, Leah comes in and says hi. And and as I'm talking to her, Hannah comes around the corner and shakes my hand and says hi. And I'm fanboying now at this point while trying to play it cool. But I said something to the effect that I didn't think that I'd be standing in the Stoddard's home and that this is so cool. And and Hannah was just like, dude, we're just people. It's it's okay. So so I calmed down a little and she she asked me to come in and and tell her about myself. And, And as we walk into their family room, I see this man sitting in this recliner. And I immediately recognize that it's James, except he looks weak and frail, which is easy to tell because he doesn't have a shirt on. And so I can tell he's recovering from something. But I shake his hand and sit down and I spend the next two plus hours having the most amazing conversation I've ever had in my life with James, Hannah and the Stoddard family. James was fighting a battle with stage four lung cancer and he had just got home from the hospital, like just got home. And he actually had just gone through a similar thoracic surgery as I had five years ago or so. So I understand what he's going through with this this recovery and the pain. I mean, I spent two days in the ICU and another seven in the heart and lung center uh, recovering when I had my procedure done. But James had told the doctors after his surgery that he wasn't sticking around. He was headed home. He's, he's got things to do. And I was really impressed by that. And as we talked, I couldn't help but notice that it was very hard for him to talk because of the pain in his lung. And I think he said it had collapsed as well. So he was having a hard time getting enough air in to just, you know, just talk in general. 
but he didn't care. Someone was interested in Joseph Smith in his home, and he wanted to share his passion for the man and for the gospel. James told me he had been studying the prophet Joseph Smith since he was 11 years old, and that's when he had felt called to that work, and he'd been doing it ever since then. And his passion was impossible to miss. He was a very mild-tempered man, um, very calm, but you could tell he, he had a real passion and a drive um, for the work he was involved in. I won't share uh, what our conversation entailed for those two hours, but I'll tell you this. I've never felt that level of kinship uh, and of being in the presence of kindred spirits as that day in the Stoddard home. I had felt so alone in my beliefs and values up till then, and in an instant, that wall was broken down. Now, while I had been reading the first Faith Crisis book, everything rang so true to me, and I had this thought in the back of my mind that this information needs to be out there more, that it needs to be distributed in a way where more people can consume it. And the thought of starting a podcast to do that was kind of floating around there in the ether of my mind. And the longer I spoke to them, the more that idea felt right. Towards the end of our conversation, I brought up the fact that I had been thinking of launching this podcast, and what James said to me about that, I'm going to keep private, it's personal to me, but I can tell you that the idea for this podcast went from an if to this is absolutely happening and it's happening yesterday. I've had lots of harebrained ideas in my head throughout my life. There's probably no less than three in my mind at any given time, honestly. But what James said, along with his family, made this real for me. I don't know if this podcast would have even gotten lift off if it weren't for that fact. Certainly it wouldn't have happened so quickly. But I began that day to consume everything I could get my hands on that is relevant to traditionalist LDS values. And about a month later, this podcast was born. This podcast would not exist if not for the encouragement and advice that was given to me in that home that day. James was on death's doorstep. He had just returned home from a major surgery and was in a lot of pain. And he chose to spend that time, more than two precious hours of his final days on this earth, not to ask if I liked his books or what I thought of his work, but to know who I was. He was genuinely interested in me as a person, what I thought. It was never about him. It was always about me. And that really struck me, and I'll never forget that. I only met the man once for a few hours, but now I feel like we've always been friends. And maybe we, we, we were once, who knows? I'd like to think so. I honestly feel that experience was a blessing and a privilege in my life. That is the James Stoddard that I know. He passed away peacefully at 9 a.m. on September 6th. He was ushered to paradise where I have no doubt that the prophet Joseph Smith waited to greet him with open arms. And from what I know of James, he didn't dilly-dally for long before rolling up his sleeves and carrying on the work for those on the other side that he dedicated his life to here on earth. That is the man I had the brief privilege of knowing and that I will be eternally grateful for having the opportunity to know. I encourage all of you to study his works and the vast legacy he left behind because I promise you this, His name will be remembered for good in the last days.